at the moment, the, the, the work that I'm doing at the moment, I'm also not interested in teaching and learning, but I'm also doing a lot of work on AI. So I also very interested in using um, AI. So we, I have written a book with my colleague, um, The Future of Intelligent Transport System, and I do a smart city and so on. So I'm, I, I love research. It's just a privilege to know that you know, research is my hobby as well as my job. So I really, even though I'm retired now, I'm a maths professor, I'm still doing a lot of research. I'm doing more research than I was before because I love research. Research, you know, it's, I can do research every day, you know, I never get tired of it. Yeah, not only that, I'm also involved in, in, in um, journal, I'm also conference chair for two conferences that, that you can see that is happening very soon. So I'm going to, I'm going to Thailand. The conference is going to be next uh, in, in, in a week's time, on Monday. So we have a conference there in, in um, on knowledge management, which is knowledge management plus computing and all the te technical side of uh, IT. And the other one is to do with learning, and, you know, challenges, you know, the workshop, learning technology for education challenges. So I hope that you missed the, uh, the, the conference this year, so you, you cannot submit paper because we're having a conference already next week. What a shame. But next year, we have a conference. We have the conference going on you know, every year. And you can see that it's the uh, 16, this is 17 now. We're going to be 18 next year. It will be the, the, the 12th next year. So where are they going to be? You'll be very excited. I'm sure. I hope that you will submit the paper to it. It is going to be in Colombia, Bogota. So it is a beautiful place. I have been there and I. I would really love you to submit the paper and come to Colombia. It's really nice. The best coffee in the world. I can recommend you that. <laughs> <laughs> so please come and submit paper. You know, if you're going to keep in touch with me and I'll send you the call for paper, it should be coming out soon, immediately after the conference. So it will be in Colombia, probably around July. I'm not so sure whether July or August. So please submit the paper and come. Now, I'm going to talk today about uh, online learning because most of us are involved in online learning since the pandemic, whether we like or not. And also, I'm going to talk about TPEX, you know, a, a tool, a, a methodology that we use to design online learning that included all the components that you need. Because online learning, not just, you know, you, uh, people have forced into online learning in the last, um, you know, because of the pandemic. A lot of them have no idea how to design online learning. I'm going to talk about how we, we can use TPEC to help us to design effective online learning. It has been proven to be very, very effective. It actually shows teachers and uh, academics how to do it if you have no idea how to do it. Then I think TPEC is very useful, but it has one thing that it lacks is the fact that we don't, it hasn't got the facility to incorporate how people learn. You know? So I'm very interested in how people learn because I've been doing a lot of problem based learning in, in most of my life in the last nearly 30 years. So I want to find out how do we learn? How do we uh, help uh, teachers and students to be better learner so that we can train them after being to the, you know, give, give, giving all sort of uh, techniques and theory, we can support the student to make them more, more motivated so that they will learn, not just learn, but very uh, learning effectively to be, to be a smart learner so that, you know, so that when they go out and graduate, they, they actually can apply what they have learned to use in their work. And not only that, but they actually enjoy learning. I have students that I taught who were not interested in learning before. But after I taught them the method of learning, they said to me, I love learning now. I am going to do my PhD. Now, that is what you want the student to do. This is exactly. And I can give you testimony from my student even now. The, I talk, I email, they email me regularly. After 20 years, they said to me, the method that you taught me is the best one. You know, I'm still using it now in my work. That's why I, where I am now, <laughs> because of the, 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 the learning, you know, the way that I know how to learn effectively. I can use it to apply in my job. That's why I'm so passionate about learning. So I want to talk about how do, how do I, how can we learn from neuroscience to help us to design better courses for the student and how can we actually help the student to learn better? In other words, benefit for the student and the teachers, especially for teaching education, especially for us you know, as an academic. How do we design courses that will allow us to promote motivation, engagement, you know, all these things to the students so that when the student comes to the class, whether online or offline, they really enjoy it. You know? They say, oh, I love this. They will not go to sleep. What, what, what I like when I go to conferences, you know, when I go around the world, I get invited. I, 
you know, the students, and the people, I, I look, look at the audience, they, if they go to sleep, I know that they're interested. If they're knocking their head and then they're really interested, I know that I got them. And this is the way that we want our students to do. So you want to go to the, to the room and you know, even the, the students half asleep, then you go around and you motivate them. And after about 10 minutes, they're all way up and they really enjoy it. You know, when I was, when I was in Taiwan many years ago, um, I, went, I went to give a talk, you know, one of the university, the, the president was, of the, Taiwan, uh, the vice uh, chancellor was sitting there, you know, or the president, they call it in Taiwan. And then he told me beforehand, he said, do you know, this bunch of students are very, very, they're not motivated at all. They don't really like learning. They don't like to listen to anything. He said, I'm, I'm warning you now. So that when you, when, when you, when, when you give a talk, you don't mind, you know, you will see that they go to sleep, but don't, don't, don't take it as an offense, you know, they think that you're very bad. Then after my talk, you know, half a, uh, 20 minutes into it, wow, all the students woke out, you know, <laughs> and then they were so excited. And after the, 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 the talk, all the students, those people who are very, very sort of uh, third class students, they, they asked questions. So the president was very surprised. He said, I have never, never known that my students are so motivated. He said, they were not interested at all. Your lectures, is, you know, give them so much inspiration and motivate them to, you know, they, they really, I'm surprised, he said, he said, you should come back and give more lecture to the students. I said, thank you. you know? So this is exactly what I want to do. I want to talk about how we can actually promote um, learning and uh, help the students to learn better by using neuroscience. Why is neuroscience so important? Now I'm going to talk about that. Now we just published a paper, you know, um, we just come out, this paper just came out. You can see that, you know, integrated science, we, you know, this, this is, I introduced my colleague to neuroscience and I make them do the work to try out in, in Malaysia. And this is a publication that we have, you know, and the result that you, 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 you know, is incredible. The students are so motivated, you know, and then they, you know, they're using it now. So I'm, I'm introducing this around the world now, to, not just in Malaysia, but to Taiwan, you know, and China and everywhere else, because they all want to learn. They, they ask me, they say, come back and give more, more, more talk, how to help us to, 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 to teach better and help the students to learn better. That's why I'm, 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 I'm here, really, want to share with you, you know, my experience. Okay. You know, you know that teaching and learning is, 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 is using, especially online learning. This doesn't have to be online learning, but the, the technique that I'm talking about, you know, introducing neuroscience into learning. It can be offline, it can be online. But we see online learning is problematic because of the fact that, you know, the students are not with you. You know, you, you can't interact with them. But how could you promote online learning in such a way that students actually interact, interact with you, interact with you and promote them in such a way that they want to learn. They're not to go to sleep, you know, because you, whether you can't see the students or you, you, you have no idea, but you can actually motivate the student to learn better on, for online learning using neuroscience, incorporate the principle of neuroscience into it. So, you, you know, when we have a pandemic two years ago, you know, and a lot of the time, you know, everybody basically around the world are switching to online. And most of the teachers are not prepared for, for online learning. So what do they do? They don't know how to do, do it. So, so the, but after the pandemic, people begin to look, look around and say, okay, now we've got to, look, we've got to have some provider so that in case there's another pandemic, we have to go online. So what do we do? So, you know, teacher find design online learning very difficult. So TPEC is a way of helping you, but TPEC is not that good because it hasn't got the, the, the principle of uh, learning into it. So I want to introduce a new framework that I can in introduce neuroscience into TPAC so that it can be used to teach students better so that it will motivate the student, you know, it will then engage the student. It will, you know, tell you all sorts of things. How do you actually make the student learn better? How do you help them to remember something better? How do you actually attract their attention and so on? All these things can become from neuroscience. You know, because neuroscience is actually wonderful. I mean, when the more I study neuroscience, the more I, I'm fascinated by neuroscience, how it can be used to help us, not just as a student, but as a, as a normal person, actually, you know, um, in business and all sorts of things. So I'm going to talk about that. Okay. Um, so we've seen the pandemic, as I said to you, you know, we, 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 the you know, university are beginning to look into online learning, you know, more than before. But as a said, teacher find uh, online learning very difficult, but we got to design online learning in such a way that the, the students actually learn. Online learning is very complicated. Why? Because it involves not just your con 
the main knowledge but also involve how to design system that will promote learning basically which is very difficult especially when you teach physics and you know think that you have to be interactive you know you can't teach physics without interaction because you can't teach physics you know it's very very difficult that's why we found out in malaysia so content you know must not be used in isolation from technology because the two you know, the, 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 all of them have to be integrated into the model so to, to design systems that will allow the learner to learn effectively. So, you know, so how, how do we do that, basically? We, not only that we want to design the, the courses in such a way that the people learn the content, but that they also have the ability to extend beyond the content into problem-solving skill, critical thinking skill. You need that because it's part of the, 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 the learning project. No point in you teaching content and the student at the end of the day go away, can memorize the content, but they cannot use what you have taught them. That is not what we want to do as a, you know, as a teacher. So you've got to be able to teach the student in such a way that when, when, they, when they actually go away from the course, they can use it and apply it. Ah, this is physics. This is why physics is useful for me to do this job and so on. That's what I want to do. I want to actually promote that sort of learning, you know, and that sort of learning so that students can actually use what they have learned to apply in the everyday life and in the subject that they want to do in computing, in physics, in chemistry, in medicine, in also area. So what is TPEC? I don't know whether you heard of TPEC or not. TPEC is quite quite a, 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 a well-known thing now lately, it, you know, you know. So it, it, it's been increasingly used by, 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 by teachers, you know, to, to teach to, to design online learning. All right. It actually started with 2003, you know, by, 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 you know, by those people. It was introduced in, by 2006 by, by Mistro and, and, and Kola. You know, the, 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 the subject, the TPEC, the, the theory of TPEC come from, from Schumann, you know, probably you, you, you Schumann, you, you know, she, she designed a, a, a model called PEC, you know, so it's pedagogical content knowledge, how to teach that co content knowledge. That, that, that the teacher knowledge is more than uh, knowledge of content and, you know, uh, general practical principle. That's what. And then she suggests that teacher possess a special form of knowledge that have to be that, that have to do with processing and technique for transforming the content in such a way that, you know, it can be made pedagogical viable and other useful for, for teaching. You know, some people who can actually know the content very well, but they can't teach, you see. You probably know that a lot of you know, people, I, I know somebody who, 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 who's very, very conversant with the, 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 the subject, but he has no idea how to teach. When he, when he went to the class and you want to go to sleep because he, he doesn't make any sense at all. I mean, I have colleagues like that, you know, and you probably see very famous professor walk into the classroom, nobody wants to listen, they just go away because he's so aware about the, the, the student. His thinking is far beyond them, you know, and he talked about something that nobody understands. That's not good to the student. So that's what we, we, we want them to do that. We want to... to, to you know, them to, the, the student, the, the student be able to learn, and the teacher be able to, you know, transfer knowledge from 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 from, 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 from the teacher to the student, so they can use it. Now, TPEC is related to PEC, basically it's extension of PEC, right? To, to include the te 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 technical side of um, uh, design, basically, it focuses on the complex interaction between a teacher's knowledge, you know, the, the teacher content knowledge and the pedagogical knowledge and the in, Technology knowledge in English get the three together. So it tells you how to design things, you know, from the from the content side, from the from the, you know how to look at it and then look at it from the instructional side, you know, the practical side and the technical side. How do you combine the three together? That's what TPEC is, you see. So it emphasizes the need to situate um, technological knowledge within the content and practical, you know, knowledge basically. It is basically represented by a Venn diagram. You can see that, you know, it's very um, yeah, they can see that you see you not only that you have um, you have the techno te 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 um, the content knowledge, all right, and you on, on the right hand side and you have the technological knowledge and you have the you know each of them they all integrated together so we'll talk about each of them in a moment you know the content knowledge and on the pedagogical knowledge and then the 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 the, the, the te 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 technological knowledge and then the, you combine them with the technological pedagogical knowledge you know technical content knowledge. And then you know, practical content knowledge and so on and so on until you integrate them into it all into one. So there are seven components in, in the T pack actually. First of all, you have technological knowledge, and you have the content knowledge, which is the subject that you want to teach, and you have the pedagogical knowledge. 
and then you have the, and then you have the pedagogical content knowledge, you know, how do you use the, the you know, you know, the pedagogical knowledge to teach, you know, the content, and then you've got the technolog technological content knowledge, and then you've got the technological pedagogical knowledge, and you've got that, then you combine all of them together into technical pedagogical content knowledge, right, that's called TPEC. Now, what, what is the benefit of TPEC then, you know? You know, the, the benefit of it is that teacher then have a better understanding of the, 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 the technology use, you know, how technology can be used to facilitate learning, you know, teaching the content that you want to teach. Because when, when you, the benefit of, another benefit of that, the knowledge is not separated from the technology. In other words, they're all integrated, you know, it's not separated from the technology, pedagogical, and the content. They're all working harmoniously together in one. That is what it helps you to do, basically. So it allows teacher to reflect and examine on their practice and the way technology integrated in the, in the classroom, in other words. You want to teach, you want to use technology effectively so that the, the, the teaching can, you know, be brought about the, the, the desire that you want. Okay. Now, the, it offers teacher a mental framework visualizing the complex relationship between the different components, basically. You know, the, the, the content side, the pedagogical side, and the, the, the technological side. Yeah. It can provide teacher with a language you know, that you can use to communicate with each other about the, how do you go about designing the, 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 on, the online system, basically, better. It can help the team of teachers to plan professional development opportunity and create technology lesson plan, basically. It makes learning more efficient, effective, and, and interesting and engaging using this TPEC approach, okay? You've got, you got strategy for planning, implementing educational technology, basically. Yeah. TPEC also serves as a tool enable an, an analysis of the teacher's knowledge and for planning future professional development right, that he or she acquire for ultimate use of technology. Yeah. It allows the teacher to design and implement instruction that is responsive to the need of the, the, the learner, the student. That is the most important thing. How do we design you know, learning in such a way that it facilitates learning and engage the student, promote motivation, you know, that is what we need, really, because it's no point of designing courses, you know, nobody want to, no, in, nobody interested, they never learn anything from it. And then the other thing is motivation is very important because motivation is what, what spur you on to, in learning. If the student lost motivation in the first minute you got it, then, then they're going to sleep, they switch off, they don't want to learn anymore. And that is a bad thing. So we don't want to do that. We want to make sure that the students are engaged in the learning and also motivated. Okay. And then, then in, you know, we also, you know, the, 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 it also allow you to share idea more effectively. All right. Allow you to, to streamline collaboration and communication. All right. Teacher can use TPEC by applying instruction design to the integration of technology in teaching and learning, basically. So if you want to learn, you want to design courses, if you have no idea how to design courses, you can use TPEC to help you, basically, to, to, to do it because you have all the, 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 the the, 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 the skill and the knowledge, yeah, because obviously you're going to do a lot of research, you're going to learn how to do that. It's been used by a lot of people to, to, for online design, actually, quite successfully. Okay, but, but also disadvantage, obviously research is about advancing limitation of the existing technology, agree? Yeah, in other words, we found out a gap missing. So we want to plug that gap. So we do more research. To plug that gap. That's what I'm doing. You know, in other words, I'm going to extend TPEC into neuroscience. You know, with, with bringing neuroscience into it and build a better model. Okay. So we cannot. One of the problems is that we cannot assume that teacher involves that the study have the same content knowledge, pedagogical knowledge, and technological knowledge. They don't. They don't share the same thing. Okay. Algorithm must be used. You know, when you use algorithm, you must take into account very skill level for each of the the, the framework. Basically, that's a main problem. The TPEC. And the other one is that TPEC does not, you know, describe how teacher may develop strength in each of the components. It doesn't do that. It does not consider how students learn, basically. How, how does people learn? How do you actually promote learning in such a way that the students actually want to learn? You know, how do you engage the student? How do you make them, how do you motivate them? You know, how do you help them to learn better? You know, and think better. It hasn't any of that because you know, they don't consider neuroscience at, at this stage. 
So I want to introduce a new subject now called neuroscience. It's a very fascinating subject. I love it so much. I've been doing I've been doing neuroscience research for a few years now, and it is so fascinating. That the more I get involved in neuroscience, the more I get fascinated by it. Not just for teaching and learning, but for AI as well, artificial intelligence. So I use it for both, you see, because I'm in computing. So I I look at neuroscience, how to design AI system. You know the AI system at the moment is limit, limited. It can only do narrow AI. So we haven't got general AI yet. ChatGPT trying to achieve that, but it's, not, it's a long way to go. So we, I've been trying to promote how do we use understanding the brain to design general AI. And, and my, um, Google just brought one of the, the, the DeepMind, I think, the, 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 the company. They are doing that, exactly. They're going to use neuroscience to promote general AI, and they're working on it. You know, so it's very exciting for me because I can see, I can see that some companies are taking a great interest in, in neuroscience to understand how the brain works so that they can then design AI in such a way that it can mimic you know, the, how the brain works in, and also can, can, can solve the problem you know, in, in, in most of the application. So I'm doing it in two fronts and I'm also looking at neuroscience, how do I help people to learn better because you know, how understanding the brain will allow us to to, to teach people better, you know, to, to, to teach people how, how, you know, how, what is understanding, how do you remember things and how do you apply things and so on. So it's a very fascinating area. So I hope that some of you after listening today will go into it, you know, in a different area because it's really a, a exciting area, you know. I mean, I, you know, and when I talk to you know, and then everybody want to, they say, oh, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to get into it, you know, please help me. So, so it's, it's, I, I went to Morocco in May giving a conference there. I, I was a keynote speaker there. And to do with e-learning, but it's, it's the AI e-learning. So I introduced them to neuroscience. They said we are going to do neuroscience now. We're going to introduce neuroscience into our online learning design, and we're going to incorporate that. So it's 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 just fascinating when you introduce something something new. Everybody start looking into it, and they go start with research, you know, and they they can see a lot of potential in the area. So so neuroscience. What is it? Neuroscience. You know, I mean, it, it, it's a very important subject, not just for teaching and learning. You know, the other thing that I found neuroscience very interesting is that more and more people are suffering from a disease called dementia. So I want to find out how I can use neuroscience to help people to reconnect the neuron again so that they can, you know, be back to, you know, to, you know, basically, can you do that? I think you can, but we need a lot of research in that area. Please join me in research in this area because we have, we have a lot of world need in this area to solve this problem. And I believe that, the, you know, understanding the brain, how the brain works, especially the part of the brain called hippocampus, in a minute I'll introduce it, it's the most powerful part of the brain. And this is the thing that to do with learning, to do with memory, to do with everything, your emotion, everything. So when you know that, you can then reconnect and fire the neuron. You know, one of the problems that we have is that people think that you believe, people think that when you actually get all, all your neurons die, true, most of the neurons die, disappear, and damage. They think that you don't generate new, new neurons anymore. That is rubbish. Neuro, neuroscience has proven that that is called a subject called neurogenesis. Neurogenesis means you, you continue to generate neurons if you know how to do it until you die. Basically, so it's so exciting area. That means that we have a potential to help the dementia people or help the Alzheimer's people to actually, you know, generate new loan to help them to to, 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 to to learn again. Why can't we do that? Why are we not doing that? I want to do that. I want to help people. I urge you, please do that, you know, for gonna say not just for learning, you can help the student to learn better, you know, and you can also help people in the healthcare, you know, please do that. So what is neuroscience? Neuroscience is a scientific study of human brain and the nervous system. You know? If it, it, it comes from it, it involves all discipline. Okay. It's the study of anatomy and physiology of the human brain, including the structure, neuron, mole molecule perspective to determine how it works. Okay. Study how the brain works in terms of mechanics, function, system to create recognizable behavior. Very, very exciting. You see it? Yeah. So it's the study of the brain and the nervous system. Uh, study neuroscience show how the brain signals to each other which chemical they use, how they connect to each other by sending small electrical pulses. Look at the connected activity in the visual area of the brain and the auditory area of the brain and the thinking area of the brain. Oh, you know, how do people think? You know, how do we, we, you know, and so on. So it's so exciting, really. We've got the technology nowadays to do that. Before that, we didn't have it. We've got, we got FMIR, we've got PEC, we've got all sorts of technology now to monitor the 
when, when, you're, when you're doing problem solving, when you're doing thinking, it's, you know, it, we can visualize the, the, the brain now. So there are different branches of neuroscience, you know, the one that we, we're interested in, the, the two branches is cognitive neuroscience and educational neuroscience, that's what we do with learning, okay? So we're going to go into those two areas, we're going to ignore the others, because they, you, you know, obviously, you, you know, if you de depending on what area you're get, getting into, okay? Then now, neuroscience, cause, you know, what are the core concepts defined by, by neuroscience? Is that life experience changes. In, in, in neuroscience, you know, the first principle is that your experience changes the nervous system, your brain changes all the time, you know. It's called neuroplasticity. Plastic, you know, it, it, the brain just like a plastic, you know, it, 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 it's moldable, it's changeable. You know, when you come across new thing, you know, your brain changes. Yeah, every minute of your then you're thinking, even sitting here, your your brain is changing now. We're gonna listen to my, my talk. Yeah. And intelligent, what well, what is intelligent? Intelligent is the result of the brain, how the way the brain reason, the, the brain plan and solve problem. That this is what intelligent is. So you want to be intelligent, you want to understand intelligent, you've got to understand neuroscience because that is what it involves. Okay. So the brain communicate knowledge to languages, you know, they also tell you how to, you know, how to speech, how to learn new languages and so on. It just gives you a lot of clue. The human brain enables us to understand how the world works, basically. That is basically what neuroscience is about. It's the most complex organ in the body, is the brain. Nobody, at the moment, we understand a little bit about brain. There's a lot of things that we don't understand, but we're trying to do research in that area to understand the brain because of the new technology. You know, the brain, you know, they, they got signal in the brain, both electrical and, you know, and chemical signal used by the neuron, how the brain communicate with each other by, by, you know, by the neuron. You know? So the foundation of the nervous system is genetically determined. You know, you, you've got a circuit there. You know? So it's very exciting. Okay, totally neuroscience. There's a two branches that we're interested in because it's to do with thinking, you know. So what is cognitive neuroscience? Cognitive is a scientific field that is concerned with the study of a biological process and aspect that underline cognition, knowledge, thinking. Okay. With a specific focus on neural connection in the brain, which are involved in mental thinking. And now to do with the thinking, all the neurons connected together. That's how we think, how we learn, how do we understand something, how do we actually, you know, process something. It's the study of the mental brain process and underlying neural system. Right. Included thinking and behavior, and is underpinned by the, by the brain. We look at how the brain learns. Yes, this is very important. How the brain learns, store, and use information it acquires. Very, you know, how the brain learns learn, learn something, how it actually stores the thing. How can, you know, how we're going to use it. You know? It's to learning that the brain enables us to adopt to our ever-changing environment. We all learn. It doesn't matter whether you're learning in school or learning anything in, in life. The purpose of cognitive neuroscience is what? To determine how the brain functions and achieve performance, how the brain works. So we want to learn, understand new, uh, uh, neuroscience, how the brain works. Most people in the hospital will be concerning with cognitive neuroscience. You know, most of them. I encourage my consultant in the hospital to look into this area now. I, I you know some of the people that I, I, I got to the hospital and I told my consultant they got to look into neuroscience. They asked me why I told them the, the reason why. And then they all thinking that it is a good idea. So I'm, I'm going, you know, I'm at the QE <laughs> and, 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 because I, I, I have a problem in my immune system. So I got to the QE. So I encourage my, all my students to, to my, my consultant to look into, into, into the research in, in the different area because they don't understand things. So I told them you got to do research to solve the problem that you don't know. Okay. Now, the other thing that we are interested in, in the, from neuroscience is two, two branches, as I said to you. The other one is the educational neuroscience. What is educational neuroscience? Educational neuroscience bring together different subjects, psychology, education, and neuroscience. You know? It's to study how the brain works in relationship to learning in the classroom, basically. It's so exciting. You see that? You know, the work. And every task, learning opportunity, and experience help to shape our brain, basically. All right. The aim of education and neuroscience is what to do to generate basic and apply knowledge that will provide a new transdisciplinary account of learning and teaching. All right, that allow us to actually to 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 to, to inform education teaching. So the major major aim of neuroscience, no, uh, uh, education neuroscience, is to bridge the gap between, you know, you know the two field education. And the brain, so that you know, it allows you to understand a direct link to to the two instead of having an intermediate. You know. 
okay? New education and neuroscience help us to shed light why certain type of learning are more rewarding than the other type. In other words, why this learning is better than the other learning, you know? You have different learning methods, but why is it this one is better? Because it's to do with the brain, how the brain works. That's why it's better. That's why, I, you know, it's so exciting. The, now, the brain, one of the brain thing is that brain neuroscience plasticity. You know, the, 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 the brain is like a plastic, you know? Honestly, yeah. People think that it wasn't like that, but it is. Uh, so you can, you, it changes every day, every moment of your life, your brain changes, your experience changes, your learning changes. Who control that? Your brain. So the plasticity is the brain of the brain and what happens when we learn new skills at different, at different states, different ages. You think that you, when you're old, you, you don't learn nonsense. Nonsense, that is rubbish. Okay, way of enhancing ability to learn, you know, okay. And that's what education uh, neuroscience does. And the law of digital technology in learning and teaching, you know, with many other things, okay? Neuro education neuroscience has the potential to improve educational outcome by changing factors that infant learning. How do we change something to enable the student to be more motivated? How can we pay, help the student to get attention to the learning and so on? They all come from neuroscience, you know. If you apply that, the student will, will respond because that's how our brain works. It doesn't matter whether you, you are adult or youngster. They all, you know, we all created, you know, having the same brain, you know, different, you know. So to improve, you know, again, by, by changing factors, the infant learning factors such as motivation, you see, very important motivation, you know. And the other one, the attention, very important in neuroscience, all right. Ability to learn, very important. Memory, you know, and prior knowledge, stress, help, and nutrition. All these play an important part in our life. Whether you believe it or not, you know that our life, you know, a lot of the doctors will tell you that what we eat determines our lifespan, which is the more I look at it, the more I believe it is. Now, neuroscience tell you that anyway, help, you know, because how the, that's how the brain works. You know, you want to promote a lot of, um, the, the, you, know, you want to, to, to improve your, your hippo, Campus, you got to do exercise. You want to improve your your hippocampus, you know, make you more intelligent, to make your brain bigger. You got to do that. You got to reduce stress and so on. All this come from neuroscience. Isn't that exciting? You know, imagine you were also about releasing stress. But how do you release stress? The neuroscience will give you some example of how to reduce stress because you know how do you do it so that the brain will react in such a way that it will reduce the stress. So it has so many implications. But why are we not learning about it? Why are we you know, doing all the other things. I cannot understand it. That's why I'm so excited about my, my research. Okay. It's based on the principle that understanding the neural mechanism underlying the, the, the learning, but we inform teaching, you know, in the classroom. All right. The aim is to understand the working of the brain and the connected nervous system. Okay. The functional architecture of the brain and how the brain and the mind work together. All right. And it's also called brain, uh, mind brain education or neuro education basically okay um a uh, 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 mb mbe very popular at the moment how about university is using it you know to teach and all the top university in america are looking into that how to train teacher to use neuroscience to teach you know student so they can make, make better students okay bring together research in all the different disciplines, you know, uh, you know, um, you know ty cognitive psychology, education psychology, and so on, okay? The aim is to generate basic and apply knowledge that will provide a new, as I said to you already, oh, no, no, I'm, I'm going backward now, Mama. Um, and how little science can help learning. Knowing how the brain works help the teacher to plan lesson and choose a method that align with neuroscience science principle, okay? It helps the teacher to understand how the behavior of the student is influenced by how the brain works, by its environment, by the genetic, of the person and by the perception of the student. All right, I shed light on the important topic related to how the brain learns, such as neuroplasticity, neuroplasticity, memory, metacognition, knowledge about knowledge, and also mindfulness and retrieval. How do you get information out? You know, when you learn already, it's stored in long-term memory. How do you retrieve it? Why is it effective? Why is it not effective? And then reflection. You know. And then motivation, prior knowledge. Prior knowledge is very, very important in learning according to neuroscience. If you look at the way that the neurons fire together and so on. It understands how student brains are affected by factors such as emotion. They're very important. Students have emotion, you see. 
and exercise sleep, uh, motivation, social encounter, and so on. You know, so that we can choose the best way to help the student. You know. Okay, how can we use neuroscience in learning? Okay, this is this is what look, we can we can use neuroscience to increase the learning dopamine level. All right. Now, what is dopamine? Dopamine is a chemical produced by the brain. All right. It's very important. It, you know, when, when you're happy, your dopamine is, you know, increased. And when you've got too much dopamine, you go into stress. So you've got to balance the two. You've got to make sure that it is not too much, it's not too little. And it's really interesting. That is the thing that control your emotion. Do you know that? Dopamine. Yeah. Yeah. It's very, very important. It's very interesting. You look at that, the research, you know, it gives you a result of clue about how do you actually help the person when they got problem? How do you make them reduce, reduce the stress and also, you know, reduce the anxiety and so on? That is a chemical that control it, you know, a lot of, you know, in that. So it creates a learning environment without stress, basically. It built a, you know, multi-sensory learning environment, all right? We're going to talk about age, you know, how the, the model, how can you use it to, to introduce into neuroscience into your teaching, okay? I mean, talk, talk about training program that actually engage the, 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 the learner, okay? Now, this is this is one of them. The H model is basically here, you know, according to the H model, you know, attention is critical, you know, in, in learning, very, very important. You know, when you're learning, you've got to generate new insight, you know, but generate new insight for the learner to absorb the, the learning that, that, that they have learned. You've got to allow them time to, 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 to to crystallize that idea, and you also need to provide environment for them to to to, to integrate the prior knowledge with their long term memory, so that they can use it. Basically, talk integration, and the other one, the emotion, is very very important because you got to allow the, 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 you know you got to make sure that the students are happy when they're learning. So the learning level must be at the right level, not too much, not too not too little. So you you know how do you actually do that? By understanding your brain, you should be able to do that. And then, then, then space, you've got to allow them to have space to learn, not only space to learn, but you've got to space up the learning in such a way that they actually learn effectively, you know. So people think that multitasking is good. No, the brain does not do multitasking, do you know that? It doesn't do it at all. It's been proven, it doesn't. So if you do multitasking, you're going to end up disaster. You cannot, the brain does not work. It cannot concentrate in more than one task at a time. The, 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 the idea that you can do multitasking it's proven to be false. You cannot do that, basically. It's just disaster. So don't do that. Yeah. You can't do that, basically. Okay. Um, okay, now the H model, H standing for what? The H model standing for attention, emotion, you know, yeah, uh, uh, the H model, emotion, okay? The gen no, attention, generation, emotion, and station. Uh, it can it apply to the biological and psychological element of our brain. How, you know, so it's very important. Cognitive overload is sometimes we all experience, don't we? We all too much information coming in. What do we do? We we freeze up. No, we can't do that. Don't don't allow that to happen. So H a model right, for learning. Look at how we learn and how to make learning more, you know stick basically. Yeah. And then we, we we retain information when we focus enough attention. Right? We cannot retain information when we cram with too much information. We have got to do that. Now, how do we actually do that in our teaching? How do we make them attentive? Neuroscience will tell you how to do that, basically. So it's very important because the first few minutes of your, 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 your lesson is the, the thing that you will get the student, whether they've gone to sleep or, or, or they pay attention. You got them, basically. You got to take an active role in generating knowledge to allow this. Yeah, yeah. And the other one is that you got to have the right emotion you know, for making sure that the student feel happy in the right environment. To revisit and then and also to revisit the information that is regularly, and you also allow spacing, making sure that the the, the, the learning is spaced out, not come in all together. Now, you know we know that anyway, but we don't really know that whether it's true or not. But neuroscience have proven that it is true. This is how the brain works, isn't it amazing? We know a lot of things, but we never proven that it is the case. Such like spacing out thing work, but this is how the brain work. You know, if you study the brain, it actually does that. Yeah. You know? So amazing, you know, as I said, the more I look into neuroscience, the more. Now the brain, okay, now we're going to talk about a little bit about the brain. Very exciting, the part of the brain. Gonna, I'm giving you a brief introduction, no, I'm, I'm, you know. No. It's a very complex going to control our talk, memory, emotion, touch, motor skill, vision, cycling, anything that you name, it controls everything, okay? Okay, 
yeah, breathing, temperature, hungry, you know, every process, you know, controlled by the brain. So why don't we understand the brain? The brain and the spinal cord, you know, extended from, make up the central nervous system, you know, control all our body, you know, uh, yeah. And you know how much, how much, how much the brain work, uh, weight, only about three pounds, but it's the most important organ in our body. It's all, but it, it contains of 60% uh, fat and the other one, carbohydrate and all the other protein and so on, all the other things. Amazing, isn't it? And then it makes up 2% of the body weight, only 2%, but yet it, it controls the whole body. It's amazing, isn't it? And it weighs only three pounds, you know? Yeah? Can you imagine that all of us, we've got a three pound brain in our head and it control two, uh, it only occupies 2% of our body, but it controls everything. Uh, our life and death depend on our brain. Can you see that? Without your brain, you're dead, basically. Agree? And when we, we don't understand it, we don't want to know. Yeah. So this is the brain. The brain, okay? You can see that the brain, the, the, there's a brain and there's a spinal cord, you know? They're connected to each other, but spinal cord sends a signal out to the different part of the brain. You can see that. What does the brain consider? It consists of a lot. You probably hear about the gray matter. Yeah? Black gray matter. Yeah? And the gray and the, and the white one. You see that? If you look at the, the brain on the left-hand side, it got the gray matter on the outside and the white matter inside. And what, what, what does the gray matter do? What does the white matter do? It has different functions. It has different purpose. So it's very fascinating. And in the reverse, it's the, to the spinal cord, you know, the, the white matter outside and the gray matter inside. Okay. Now, what are they? It's primarily composed, consists of neurons, basically, the, the, the gray matter. Okay. And the white matter is made up of axiom. Yeah. Right, that wrap up in, in, in this marlin protecting coding. Now, this is how the brain works, okay? This is this is how the brain, your brain looks like that. Huh? One minute. Oh, 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 I've got, I've got, can you see that? We've got the big brain, the, the little brain, and, and, and the brain cell, okay? Now, I'm going to go quickly now. It, it, it's a larger part of the brain, and I'm, I'm sorry, I won't be able to talk to you too, too much now. It, it controls the speech, your judgment, thinking, and reasoning. So it's a very important part of the brain, basically, the, the bigger part of the brain, basically, okay? In the course of your function, your, your vision, hearing, touch, and all the other things, you know? It, it's, you know, the, the skin of your, the, the, the surface of the brain is called the cortex, very important part, uh, okay? Now, the, the, the cerebellum is the small brain, okay? It, you know, it, you know it, it actually controls all the other part, part, part of the body. It functionally coordinate a voluntary muscular movement, okay? It uh, allows you to maintain posture, balance, and so all the, so all the other things, also emotion and so on. So you can read the slide, basically. But the, the brain stem is the, the, the thing that, that um, connected the, the, it's the middle part of the brain. It connected the, 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 uh, the big brain with the spinal cord, okay? And it, could, it, could, it included the middle brain as well, okay? So I'm not, I'm, no, I'm, I'm going to freak too now quickly to get, go to the important part. Now the, the um, okay, now the spinal cord, I'm, not, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go to, not going to do that because this is a human brain. You can see that the brain have different, you know, have different lobes, okay? Very important, each of, each of the lobes play an important part to carry out different function. You've got the frontal loop, you've got the parotid uh, loop, and you've got the temporal loop, and you've got the optic uh, uh, loop, okay? And you can see that I'm going to go very quickly now because I'm running out of time. You know, the, it's the, you know, the largest of the lot, it's situated in, 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 the, in the front of your head. It involves things like personality, characteristic, decision-making, and movement, okay? It recognizes smell, you know, and so on. And it's also involved with speech, you know, the way that you, you learn, you know, the way you talk. Yeah. Now, this is, this is the other part of the brain, the middle part of the brain. It, you know, identify object and understand special uh, relationship. And also involved in, you know, understanding pain and so on in, in your part of the body. And it, in your, it house the, 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 the part that, that, that allows you to speak, okay? And the other part is the, 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 the back of the brain involved with vision, you know. So you can see that each part of the brain that does with the, the side, you know, that this is the side of the brain. This is the, the one that involved with short-term memory, speech, you know, musical rhythm and so on, okay. Now, so uh, you know, that is the part of the brain. So we're going now, okay. Now, the brain also have, have different glands. But one of the things that I want to talk about, all uh, right, it's very important part is the, all uh, right, I'm going to skip those, okay, you're going to look at it. Uh, this one, this part of the, this is the most important part of the brain that we all have to know. It control your memory, it control everything, you know, you know, learning is, uh, is a small 
you know, curve, you know, in, into the temple part of the brain. You remember the loop in the temple loop itself. It support memory, learning, navigation, and perception of space. Very important part. By understanding this part of the brain, you actually achieve a lot in your design, or the teaching and learning. We receive information from, from, from you know, from the, from the outside, from the, from the, you know, and you have three primary functions, forming new memory. Can you remember from forming new memory? You know, learning, emotion, all this very important. So by understanding the hippocampus, you actually do a lot of good to yourself and to the student because because it's the most important part of the brain. Okay, it, you know, a different sub area of the brain the, the play an important role in certain type of memory. You have different type of memory. We got, you know, we got a uh, declarative memory. We got procedural memory. All right, we, we, all right. It also do the relating to feeling and reaction. It helped the, you know, there are two type of memory: declarative memory and, and special memory. Okay. Now, people think that what are the risks that you 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 have if you actually have the hypo hypocampus damage? You got a problem, all right? Then you can have a lot of problem risk factor to do with age as you got older. The, the hypo hypocampus actually shrink actually, yeah, all right. And stress also actually very bad for you for you. Social isolation also very bad for the hypocampus really. And and the other one is lack of exercise. Exercise very important. It actually increase the the, 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 the size of the uh, hippocampus depression also. So very very important. Okay. Now how to keep your your, your brain healthy? You 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 got to regular exercise. You got to manage your stress. You got to treat mental health condition. Very important. We probably know a lot of the time we got a lot of students got mental problem. Why do they got mental problem? Please understand hippocampus to help them to release. You know. The, the, the mental problem and, and help them to understand, understand help your student to, to understand why they, they suffer and so on. You know, and also, you know, it helps to protect your, your, your brain basically. Okay. Now yeah, neuroplastic, as I said to you, very important. It, it, ability the brain to change, you know, adopt itself with you, you know, everything. Okay. So the neuron would, 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 would change as, as you learn something new, as, as you accept something, you hear something all the time. Okay. Now brain bed design. Okay, what we want to do is that how do we actually use neuroscience to help us to design? You've got to engage the whole learning cycle, make time for reflection in, in your design of the system, making sure that you, you allow for you know people to, 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 to create something and also active testing. All right. Make a connection with the learner prior knowledge. Very important. Learner prior knowledge must be present, please, when you do teaching. Bring them up because it's, it's very important. The brand told you that this is what this is how they learn. They learn from you know, picking information from the outside, you know, linking up with the prior knowledge. If you don't teach the student prior knowledge and expect them to understand something they don't know, you're going to lose them. So very important, you know, we found out that. I didn't know the importance of prior knowledge so important. I know it's important, but I didn't know that from the perspective of neuroscience, it's so important. By understanding neuroscience, I begin to understand why it's so important. Now. And, you know, create opportunity for, 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 for engagement and so on, okay? You've got to make sure that you, you make the student happy as well, engaging, feeling, and, and thinking. In, 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 you know, actively pay attention to, to, you know, attract that attention to the learning, okay? And get, you know, so I'm going to go very quickly now. The principle of neuroscience for, for TPAC, how, why, what, what sort of thing do I introduce in my model into, in, into TPAC? Uh? Prior knowledge, very important. So I, I might not have time to, to go into that, you know, very, very important that learning or uh, anything must have prior knowledge. Right, because it, it, the, this is how the brain works. It doesn't matter what you learn, it got to have that. Okay, you know. So the other thing that we found out from neuroscience is that use, you know, how do we actually help the student to learn better? Use image, you know, to, to visual aid, you know, to, to, to help the student to understand abstract, abstract, abstract concept. You got to make sure that visualization is very important. Okay, a learning modality. Now you think that learning style? No, learning style is no. Using different way of learning, but not learning style. People say students prefer visual, students prefer audio. Nonsense. It doesn't work that way. You use different you know, media, not, not learning style. Learning style is to be classed as a rubbish now by all the researchers in education. So please don't use that. Because, you know, so, okay, now there's another thing. So re re rehearsal is very important, making sure that the students actually allowed to practice. Attention, very important. Please in include that. In, yeah. And then, you know, so, uh, okay, attention, stress, and so on. Okay, now, 
the neuroscience motivation. But motivation, please introduce motivation in your learning. Okay, how do you motivate when you haven't got time to go into that, please? Okay, and the other, you know, you know, engagement and retention. Yeah. You know, okay, chunking, making sure that you don't cram everything in. Chunk, chunk the information. Okay, and um, introduce a joke. You know, and get, don't forget, people have only. Five, five minutes span or ten minutes span, all right? Attention is greater. So just tell a joke or, or, or give humor to the to the student. No, when I went to the lecture in my innovation class, you know what I do? Would you like to be who would like to be the next Google? Who would like to be the next Bill Gates? All oh, the students want to be the next Google, next Bill Gates. You got it for the rest. Now you listen to this lecture and you listen to my talk. It will tell you how. You say, can you say that? Oh yeah, yeah, this is how I do. You want to be next to Google? Yes. You want to be the next you you get? You know? Yeah. Next Amazon? Yeah. They all. Whew, yeah. Yeah. I want to be. I want to be. Oh, yeah. Then they, you got them for the rest of your your minute. Okay. This is exactly what I do. Uh, you know, and, and, and spread out your your learning. Okay. And create environment where they, where they can use different uh, uh, uh you know you know multi senses. Trigger the right emotion. You know. Encourage them. Okay. Make them happy. You know. So in conclusion, I oh. <laughs> Yeah. So in conclusion, I said effective learning, online learning, you know, really need to have integration of knowledge from different domains. Okay. Now, TPEC is good, but but it, you know very good, but but it doesn't include how students learn. So I want to incorporate all the other part of the the learning from neuroscience so that I can provide a better environment for them to learn basically. So we develop the model. We have been used. We have used the model for um, in in different uh, situation now. We we try it in Sabah and in Malaysia. And we're trying it in Taiwan now. We're trying it all over the world so that we can then consolidate the, the research and then we try to um, yeah, improve it. So I, I, everywhere I go, I introduce neuroscience into teaching and learning and then they, they said they're going to start using it. So it's very exciting. So it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a new world, you know, it's a new thing. So I hope that you can join with me and, and, and incorporate that in your, in, in your teaching and learning. And then we will, we will join together and make, make the model better. So that's my intention of sharing with you today. I'm so sorry that not many people want to listen to it, but you know, yeah. So thank you all so much for listening. Oh,